In 1918, a failed private teacher training school got a new life thanks to the generosity of the Ball brothers. These five Muncie industrialists had bought the land and buildings and given them to the state of Indiana. In 1929, the school's name was changed to Ball State Teachers College. And in 1965, it officially became Ball State University. What began as a teacher training school has grown into a doctoral research university with about 22,000 students and a 731-acre campus. After their time with us, graduates have gone to make an impact in education, communications, architecture, healthcare, business, the arts and sciences, and much more. Although Ball State's name and physical presence have changed over the years, its values, entrepreneurial spirit, welcoming community, and commitment to prepare students for real-world challenges and opportunities have remained constant. Today, we celebrate our students' accomplishments and academic excellence with the tradition of Ball State University's commencement ceremony. And with that, we say a good morning to you and welcome you inside Worthen Arena for the 2017 annual Ball State graduation commencement ceremony. Alongside McTidrow, my name is Tyler Bradfield. Well, we've been experiencing some heavy rain from outside and still expecting rain. And because of that, we've been forced to move from our typical outdoor location on the quad to indoors inside of Worthen Arena, but those weather conditions certainly shouldn't hinder the excitement of these graduates here today, Mick. Undergraduates, master programs handed out, and PhDs even, it's going to be a great ceremony. Family, friends, everybody here inside Worthen Arena. Well, and because of that support, we're expecting a near capacity crowd inside Worthen Arena as the next generation of Ball State graduates turn the tassel into a new chapter. And that begins our commencement ceremony today, the 179th annual and the 99th graduating class from Ball State University here in 2017. A busy day on hand. Over 3,100 students expect to receive their bachelor's degree, 19 associate's degree, nearly 750 master's degree, 37 doc doctoral and education and specialist degrees. Over the course of the morning, graduates will walk, as you see now, by their college into Worthen Arena. We'll then have the ceremonial fanfare, posting of the colors and national anthem. Proceed with our ceremony from there as the commencement address speaker will be delivered by Teresa Lubbers, the commissioner, commissioner for higher education in Indiana. There's a total of eight individual college ceremonies across campus after the first master ceremony here inside Worthen. Mick, and it, it's a very exciting day for these graduates and also their families alike. It's a great day for all of these students who will have the opportunity to graduate. You mentioned it, master programs, PhDs, the undergraduates all coming together in one ceremony. Not outdoors, but indoors, a, a great venue for an event just like this and a packed house today. Now, Mick, you're a classmate with a majority of these. What's the satisfaction of graduating? The satisfaction has to be just the accomplishment of going through all of the hard work, having the determination, being around your friends and trying to accomplish what you want to do. And all of these graduates today get to see that hard work finally pay off with the graduation, get their diplomas. As you see the graduates filing into Worthen Arena, as Mick had mentioned, and we talked at the top, being forced to move indoors this morning due to some weather that was experienced throughout the course of the week with a heavy amount of rain. And then with cold temperatures this morning, moved it indoors from the usual spot outside on the quad. As these graduates get to celebrate years of success, whether it's with a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a PhD, the involvement and the effort it takes to be able to celebrate here today. Involvement in many extracurricular activities, student organizations, over 400 plus student organizations, 60 study abroad countries, the effort certainly not lacking amongst these graduates. Absolutely, and four out of five graduates are employed in their field of study once they graduate. So Ball State and all of the colleges within the university have done a fantastic job of having each graduate go out in their field of study and really excel and have an opportunity to grow and accomplish their dreams. And so many graduates have that chance to do that right after today, hop into the real world and get that experience. Ball State in their 93% career placement rate. 
See the decorating of the caps. We mentioned expecting a near capacity crowd today, roughly about 15,000 additional people on campus. Ball State takes so much pride in making sure that it's a experimental learning and making sure that it's very hands-on. That support not also just from families, but faculty alike, Nick. 14 to one student faculty ratio at Ball State University as the graduates continue to file in. And that's given graduates, especially in this class of 2017 to have a chance to get experience and learn from their faculty members and they've all shown that determination here and they get to have that payoff today but you mentioned it the 14 to 1 student faculty ratio is a chance for each one of these students to go out and learn from their faculty members before they go out in the real world and most of them had that opportunity Mick you're in the thick of things right now as a current student yourself how has that ratio affected your learning it's been much easier to learn with the ratio such as this at Ball State just because of the hands-on experience each faculty member can help you gain. And with so many different students that can also help you, it's those faculty members that help guide. And instead of a bigger student-to-faculty ratio, it allows the students to go get the one-on-one -on -one help that they need from editing videos if you're in telecommunications or going in to the nursing program and getting that hands-on experience. Those, those faculty members are there to help, and that's been one experience that most students can take away from Ball State. You see members of the College of Sciences and Humanities filing in. The college spans the physical life, mathematical, and computational sciences, the social and behavioral sciences, and the humanities as well through its different majors and minors. Several different departments within the Colleges of Sciences and Humanities. One of the biggest departments on campus, Tyler Hertz. From anthropology to criminal justice, sociology. Very strong department here at Ball State. And they boast the most graduates here today with 835. Second on the list, the Teachers College with 611. You see the sights and the graduates inside of Worthen Arena, a 25-year-old facility built back in 1992, home of many Ball State athletic teams, 19 NCAA Division I sports teams, and you see student athlete graduates here today. a real feeling for those who do get to graduate where they did play either basketball, volleyball, so many different sports, gymnastics, the chance to graduate where they spent so much time gaining experience and getting ready for the real world. And many of these graduates as well spent time in the stands, spent time throughout the course of their years here at different events within this 25-year facility. As you'll see as part of the ceremony, nine graduating seniors will be recognized for achieving special academic distinction. That meaning they completed their bachelor's degree 
with a perfect 4.0, and all nine of them will be honored during the course of the ceremony right off the top. That's an accomplishment. It's hard to attain as many go through college and try and have a, a 4.0. A great honor for those nine students to graduate with that 4.0. Just a handful of colleges to go as the graduates continue to walk. Several of them with their decorated mortarboard. Are you a fan of that? Is that something that you'll do next year when you walk through? I think so. That's something that is always interesting to see the different types of decorations that people want to put on their caps and try to show their personality. So what? it's it's something that is is it's a fun thing to do, go around and see all the different decorations. As a faculty member, what does a day like this and a ceremony like this mean? To be able to see graduates come through that you have helped facilitate, helped mentor, helped teach over the past handful of years, to see them walk across that stage today with a diploma, what does that have to mean to those faculty members? Very satisfying feeling just for the fact that you help push each one of those students to reach a goal that they had to come to college, to get their degree, to get their education and walk away with a, a smile on their face, a diploma in their hands by the end of today. That's, that's a feeling unlike anything else, I'm sure for a teacher or a professor to go through and sit, watch just everything that goes on today and have, have a chance to see the students that they help teach get their diplomas and, and have a chance at the real world and, and get that experience that, that they really want to do. And everybody here is, it's an exceptional accomplishment to go through college. Not everybody has the chance to go through college and gain an education such like one at Ball State University. So the, the professors have done a fantastic job and that feeling has to be so rewarding. Many of those professors also banner carriers within their college. You see the banners there in the College of Business, Health, Fine Arts, College of Business with Alan D. Truell, a professor within the Information Systems and Operations Management. A handful of student athletes file in as well. With the whites around their necks. Many of them participating in athletic events here inside of Worthen Arena. As the final graduates start to claim their seats, and then we'll move into the ceremony with a posting of collars and national anthem. See the support, some of the flash bulbs. A near capacity crowd inside of Worthen Arena having to be moved inside from the usual location on the quad.
these students studying at a university that was named one of the best in the Midwest by the Princeton Review and has been named that for more than a decade. Honored with several different distinctions and awards as the graduates have found their seats. And applause to start the ceremony. TC graduates here today. with the mace carrier, Dr. Merbler. Vice President for Academic Affairs. Welcome to the 179th commencement of Ball State University. I am Marilyn Buck, Acting Provost and Acting Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. Please remain standing as Ms. Rachel Elizabeth Weinfeld, a candidate for bachelor, Bachelor's of Music degree, sings the National Anthem. Stripes and bright stars. Oh. 
Would you please be seated? Members of the faculty, graduates, parents, and friends, this is a most joyous occasion, and we are glad to have all of you here to share in this important event. It is a very special time for you who are graduating and for your families and friends, and we offer our warmest congratulations. I am now pleased to introduce the platform party, the board of trustees, the administration, and those participating in today's ceremony. Would you please hold your applause until all introductions are completed? I'll ask the platform party to stand as I call your name. Mr. William Knight, Associate Provost for Institutional Effectiveness. Dr. Cortland Cook, Chairperson of University Senate and Professor, Department of Special Education. Dr. Trudy Wireman, Assistant Provost for Learning Initiatives. Dr. Charlene Alexander, Associate Provost for Diversity, Director of the Office of Institutional Diversity, and Interim Associate Vice President for Community Engagement. Ms. Jennifer Blackmer, Associate Provost for Entrepreneurial Learning. Dr. Kristen McAuliffe, Acting Assistant Provost. Mr. Matthew Shaw, Dean of University Libraries. Ms. Sally Falling, Vice President and General Counsel. Mr. Wayne Estopinal, Trustee. Mr. Brian Gallagher, Trustee. Ms. Christy Horn, Chair of the Alumni Council. Ms. Jean Ann Harcourt, Trustee. Dr. Kay Bales, Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Services and Dean of Students. Mr. Michael McDaniel, Trustee. Mr. Dustin Meeks, Trustee. Ms. Kathy Wolf, Vice President for Marketing and Communications. Mr. Matt Mopper, Assistant Secretary to the, of the Board of Trustees. Mr. Tom Bracken, Secretary of the Board of Trustees. Mr. Lauren Maum, Interim Vice President for Information Technology. Dr. John Merbler, Chairperson of the Department of Special Education and Professor of Special Education who is carrying the Presidential Mace. Ms. Rachel Elizabeth Weinfeld, our vocalist. Mr. Hollis Hughes, Board of Trustee Emeritus and President's Medal of Distinction, Distinction recipient. Ms. Teresa Lubbers, Indiana Commissioner for Higher Education, Honorary Degree recipient and today's commencement speaker. Dr. Carrie King, Interim President. Mr. Rick Hall, Chair of the Board of Trustees. Ms. Renee Conley, Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees. Dr. Carolyn Capinas, Interim Associate Vice President for Research and Dean of the Graduate School. Dr. John Emmerent, Acting Dean of Honors College. And Colonel Kelly Rosenberger, Chairperson of the Department of Military Science. At this time, I would like to introduce the college deans and associate deans who are seated with the graduates. Please stand and be recognized when I call your name. Interim Dean Jim Jones, College of Applied Sciences and Technology, and Interim Associate Dean Amy Harden. Interim Dean Philip Rep, College of Architecture and Planning, and Associate Dean David Ferguson. Dean Jennifer Bott, Miller College of Business, and Associate Dean Shashil Sharma. Dean Roger Lavery, College of Communication, Information, and Media, and Associate Dean Lori Byers. Dean Robert Kavam, College of Fine Arts, and Associate Dean Michael O'Hara. Dean Mitchell Whaley, College of Health, and Associate Deans Jayanthaya Kandaya, Anthony Mahon, and Denise Siebert. Interim Dean Jeffrey Girgsby, College of Sciences and Humanities. Associate Dean Susan Johnson, Interim Associate Dean Kevin Smith, and Acting Associate Dean Claire Chateau. Dean John Jacobson, Teachers College, and Associate Deans Anita Welsh and James Stroud. Dr. Deborah Mix, Acting Associate Dean of the Graduate School. Today, our interpreters are Tabitha Poplin, 
and Vicki Silovey. Please join me in recognizing these individuals. Now I'm pleased to welcome Interim President Terry King to the podium. Good morning. I would like to begin by presenting one of the highest honors this university presents, the President's Medal of Distinction for an individual's significant and unselfish contributions to the advancement of the university, the community, the state, or the nation. I am pleased to award the President's Medal to Mr. Hollis Hughes, member of the Board of Trustees Emeritus, in recognition of his dedication, service, and loyalty to this university. I ask Hollis to please join me at the podium and for Trustee Hall to assist in the presentation of this honor. Hollis E. Hughes, Jr. exemplifies this honor in many ways. He served on the Ball State University Board of Trustees from 1989 through 2016 and held the offices of President and Secretary. The Ball State University Foundation, the Alumni Council, the Black Alumni Constituent Society, and several capital campaign committees benefited from his efforts. He has championed diversity initiatives at his alma mater. Hollis and his late wife, Lavera, gave generously to Ball State and became members of the Fellows Society. Ball State could count on Hollis as, it rep as its representative at hundreds of community and university events and at many, many Cardinal athletic events. Hollis's relationship with Ball State goes back more than 50 years. He earned his bachelor's degree in education here in 1965, followed by his master's degree in sociology and psychology in 1972. After he left campus, he taught social studies, coached track, cross country, and swim teams, and sponsored the Booster Club and Black Students Cultural Society at South Bend LaSalle High School. Then he led urban renewal and housing agencies in the city. He was director of South Bend's Model Cities Program, director of South Bend's Bureau of Housing, director of the St. Joseph County Housing Allowance Office, director of the Housing Assistance Office Incorporated, and executive director of the St. Joseph's County Housing Authority. In 1994, Hollis's career changed again when he became president and chief executive officer of the United Way of St. Joseph's County. He led the agency through some new efforts and fundraising campaigns until his retirement in 2007. In his community, Hollis has served on boards of many organizations, including the Memorial Health Systems, First Source Bank, South Bend Community School Corporation, and South Bend Mishawaka Area Chamber of Commerce. His recognitions include the Distinguished Black Alumni Award and the Benny Award, and naming of the, just last night, naming of the Alumni Center's Assembly Hall. In his last Ball State Trustees meeting this past December, the board and I were proud to witness Hollis receiving the Sagamore of the Wabash, Indiana's highest honor. Hollis, today in awarding you the President's Medal of Distinction, Ball State University recognizes your commitment, devotion, leadership, voice, and vision to your alma mater and your community. It is my honor to bestow upon you the President's Medal of Distinction. Thank you all, President King, Board Chairman Hall. I'd like to thank you for this really prestigious and exceptional honor. Today I have to confess to being a bit embarrassed. It has been my pleasure to work on a number of things at Ball State, and in recognition of that, which was so enjoyable, I don't understand but I'm thankful anyway. To the young graduates that are out in the audience, 52 years ago, almost to the day, and interestingly enough, 
after a little rain, my commencement was moved inside as well. I know how you feel today. Today, you're feeling a real sense of pride. You have earned something very special. Your folks believed in you, your professors believed in you, and most importantly, you did too. So today, if I recall the feeling, you're feeling really kind of proud. You earned it. Yes, you've earned it. The other thing that it took me a couple of years to appreciate was that what I had earned was one of the finest educations the state of Indiana could offer. Ball State has provided you with that. I learned very quickly after leaving Ball State and entering a career initially as a teacher that I was among the best prepared in the state of Indiana to do my job. Success was there based on the hard work of administrators, of faculty, and staff. And the most important thing is that about 98% of those people weren't even Ball State alumni, but they cared about the institution. They cared about me and my fellow students so much that they provided me with the best the state had to offer. I congratulate and thank faculty administrators and staff today. I promised I wouldn't be long and so I'm not going to take any more of your time other than to urge you after you've taken appropriate time, and I have to confess it took me probably about five years to remember and give back to Ball State. Give back financially if and when you can, but more importantly, there are opportunities for you to reconnect with your colleges, with friends, and with faculty members. Do that. It will pay handsomely to you. The last thing that I will leave you with is that I, and I hope you will be, am a proud Ball State graduate. I bleed red and white. So I urge you, in your own special way, to wear the colors, wear the red and white, get your Ball State plate, recognize your fellow alum, congratulate them, make sure you acknowledge that you are a proud Cardinal graduate, and I assure you that the recognition from other alum will be mutual, and who knows? the financial and employment opportunities will be overwhelming. Thank you, God bless you, and success is on its way to you. We will now proceed with the conferral of the honorary degree. I ask Trustee Hall, Trustee Conley, and Acting Provost Buck to assist. Teresa Lovers, would you please present yourself for the awarding of the honorary degree? It is a special moment for the university to confer an honorary degree on individuals who have demonstrated remarkable achievements, and we are proud to bestow it on Teresa S. Lovers, Commissioner for the Indiana Commission for Higher Education. The Commission ensures the state's post-secondary education system meets the needs of students and the state. As Commissioner, Teresa works to increase college completion, ensure academic quality and student learning, and align post-secondary credentials with meaningful careers. She partners with policymakers and higher education leaders to develop and implement the state's higher education strategic plans, including the Commission's recently adopted Reaching Higher and Delivering Value. Before joining the commission in 2009, Teresa spent 17 years in the Indiana State Senate. As chair of its Education and Career Development Committee, she guided efforts to improve education and economic development. 
She is a past chair and a current member of the State Higher Education Executive Officers and the Midwestern Higher Education Compact, a commissioner of the Education Commission of the States and a member of the Board of Trustees for the Council for Adult and Experiential Learning and Indiana's Career Council. In addition to advancing education, Teresa is past chair and a current member of the YMCA of Greater Indianapolis and co-founded the Luger Excellence in Public Service Series. She earned her undergraduate degree from Indiana University and a master's in public administration from the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. We are fortunate to have Commissioner Lovers serve as our commencement speaker and look forward to her insights. Teresa, in honoring you today, Ball State University recognizes that your passion, commitment, and leadership for quality student learning in the state of Indiana. By authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ball State University, I hereby confer upon you, Teresa Lubbers, the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges thereunto pertaining, and award you this diploma and testimony thereof, and present you the academic hood for this degree. I know you could barely see Rick Hall behind me. <laughs> Thank you, President King, uh, for that generous introduction and for your service to this great institution. As I begin my remarks, I want to take this opportunity to recognize your vision and leadership. In countless ways, Ball State is a stronger university because of you. And I know I join the Ball State family in extending our deep gratitude and best wishes as I understand you'll be climbing to new heights in the next chapter of your life. I'm honored to be recognized by Ball State University with an honorary degree of laws. Receiving this degree connects me with the 2017 graduates and this renowned institution in a very meaningful way. As I offer my congratulations to the students and my thanks to the Board of Trustees and leadership team. What's not to like about giving or hearing a commencement speech? A lot. For the commencement speaker, the pressure is on to offer a memorable perspective filled with novel ideas and lessons for success. That's a pretty high bar. And for the graduates, you get plenty of advice from top 10 lists such as things I wish I, have known, I would have known when I graduated or don't let the fear of failure or the opinion of others hold you back or even a blunt message such as the one delivered by journalist and playwright Roger Rosenblatt, who cut to the chase with the simple advice, get a job. <laughs> now there's nothing wrong with any of these themes, but with few exceptions, it's not the commencement speech or the speaker that is recalled from a graduation day. My hope is that what you will remember is sharing the day with your family and friends, the affection you feel for this school and the people who taught you, and the anticipation you sense for what lies ahead. But since I have been given the privilege of being today's speaker, I offer these thoughts in the knowledge that experience will prove a better teacher than advice. It's tempting to be provocative by citing sobering facts or doomsday scenarios. Let's be honest, it's not hard to do so and suggest that as a nation, we are facing inevitable decline and as a society, our best days are behind us. I'm gonna resist that urge and offer a counter opinion that opines opportunity and hope instead of regret or fear. 
Let's consider a timely theme since most of you are launching a career, the threat of technology and automation on jobs. Studies show that nearly 50% of work activities could be automated using available technology. And the scales will continue to tilt as business processes are redefined. We know that this is causing anxiety about job security for many and a sense of disconnection for others. While millennials recognize the benefits of automation on productivity and economic growth, more than 40% believe automation poses a threat to their jobs. But this is a repeating theme. It's not hard to imagine that a similar or greater percentage of Americans held such fears when the economy shifted from agrarian to industrial in the late 1900s. What happened instead? Economic growth and higher levels of personal well-being. I prefer the perspective of one of your own, economist Mike Hicks, who recently wrote, quote, Productivity growth is the very essence of economic growth. Very real worries come not from the automation itself, but from our inability to adapt to it. Exactly right. Instead of fearing that automation is shedding jobs, we need to ensure that people have the education and skills needed for the new economy. Said another way by Bill Gates, in these circumstances, a crisis can work as a pivot. It can give us the traction to start something new or better. Much has been written in the last two decades about disruptive innovation, forces that upset organizations and industries with breakthrough technologies and new business models. It's human nature to push against these changes, hanging on to the best of what used to be instead of the possibilities of what can be. A recent article by Andy Kessler in the Wall Street Journal reflects on the anti-industrialists of the 18th century, led by Ned Ludd. Later, known as the Luddites, the movement rebelled against the machines that powered the Industrial Revolution. Of course, this thinking was short-sighted, failed, and millions of jobs were actually added to the country's economy. A contemporary and disturbing European version of this attitude, dubbed degrowth, advocates putting the skids on economic progress that is created through new technologies. It takes time for people to adapt to sweeping changes. That a large computer could be replaced by a small phone. That news consumption would be more from electronic devices than print newspapers. That individualized transportation systems like Uber or Lyft could challenge traditional transportation modes. That learning could be delivered by multiple providers and in varied ways and still complement personal and hands-on instruction. All of these disruptions, even if initially resisted, can improve service, productivity, and learning. Each displaces some jobs, but also creates new ones. The good news is that here at Ball State, you have been preparing for not only a job, but the future of work. You have been immersed in applying what you are learning, strong academics, complemented by relevant workplace experience. What we hear from employers is that they need graduates who think critically, work collaboratively, and adjust to changing demands. As a state, we need both pe people who make at things and invent things. And as a society, we need leaders who are capable, adaptable, and civically engaged. 
These are enduring qualities, and regardless of the changes that are occurring all around us. What does this dynamic economy mean for you as you graduate into a world that is changing so dramatically and rapidly that it's hard to even imagine the future? For one thing, it means that you will need an increasing awareness that education divides the haves and the have-nots. Since the mid-80s, nearly 80% of the disparity in economic well-being can be attributed to the differences in college access and success. In other words, you're one of the fortunate ones. You're starting off or moving to the next level in your career with the unquestionable advantage of a quality higher education experience. That doesn't mean you won't have to adapt and keep learning, but it does mean you're well positioned to succeed. Today, I want to encourage you to remember the ones who, for whatever reason, are not getting started from that launching pad. We know for sure that they face the strong likelihood of poverty and all the related challenges that come with it because they lack the education that you have. Here again, I believe in hope over fear because of you, because I hope you will be smart enough and grateful enough to make a personal difference in closing the achievement gap. How often do we hear or use the phrase, it is what it is? I know I've used it countless times when I can't seem to explain an event, a behavior, or a disappointment. It is what it is. But is that really true? Sure, there are circumstances in life that must be accepted. But more often, we can do something to make things better. The way to counter an attitude of resignation to circumstances is to pivot to a perspective of, it is what I make it. In that context, let's consider what we who have the advantage of education can do to help bridge the gap. Others will offer economic or political solutions. These are personal ones. First. Mentor someone who would be the first in their family to attend college. A graduate of the 21st Century Scholars Program recently put it this way, I never thought I could go to college. I didn't believe it was an option for me until a teacher and a scholarship opened up the possibility of college and made it a reality. Refusing to accept what he refers to as the soft neglect of hope he changed the trajectory of his life thanks to a mentor teacher and financial support. All of us can help at least one person benefit from more education. As you move up the ladder of your career, share your story with others. Go to a school and inspire young people with the limitless possibilities before them. Share your successes and your failures, and how you've learned from both. Model a strong work ethic and your willingness to move outside your comfort zone to adapt, change, and move forward. Be truthful but caring as you challenge them to continue their education beyond high school, explaining that if they don't, their opportunities will shrink. Second. Seek out opportunities to contribute to your community in ways that offer hope to those who feel left behind. This requires a level of self-awareness and outward thinking. Make it personal by engaging one-on-one -on -one with those who have different life journeys. Believe that you will learn as much as you impart and receive as much as you give. The value of your character will be measured by the ways you use this education to improve the lives of others 
and the communities in which you live. And third, when you're at a turning point in your life, take a risk. Start something new. Help someone without knowing how it will turn out. Do something that is outside of your comfort zone. Hopefully, it's a thoughtful risk, but regardless of the outcome, it will become a part of the tapestry of your life. It gets harder to do this when you get older and change seems riskier. When I decided to run for political office, I did so against the advice of many people I respected. Deciding to put myself in the political arena had not been a part of my career plans. It was definitely outside of my comfort zone and the odds weren't in my favor. But I felt it was a worthy risk and I knew that I would rather live with disappointment than regret. I believe that was the right decision, regardless of whether I had been successful or not. So take a risk and learn from whatever happens. Finally, we're counting on you graduates to counter the cynics, the doomsday scenarios that dominate our 24-hour news cycles. We're counting on you to discover the cures for illness and the remedies for cynicism, distrust, disengagement, and hopelessness. We're counting on you to use your education to improve our economic well-being. And we're counting on you to use your talents, education, and experience in service to others. For I am convinced that knowledge gained without service rendered is not the purpose of education. It seems to me that these are important measures of living well. And from what I've learned about you, the graduates, we won't be disappointed. Congratulations again to the 2017 graduates, and thank you for the honor of sharing this day with you. Acting Provost Buck, we are now ready to proceed with the awarding of degrees. We will proceed with the hooding of the doctoral and specialist in education candidates. Will the candidates for all doctoral degrees and education specialists please rise? Interim President King, as Acting Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, I present to you those candidates who have completed all the requirements for the following advanced degrees. Doctor of Arts, Doctor of Audiology, Doctor of Education, Doctor of Nursing Practice, Doctor of Philosophy, and Specialist in Education. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ball State University, I confer upon you your respective degrees with all the rights, honors, privileges, and obligations thereunto pertaining. The diploma of the university shall forever be the testimony recognizing the very high level of intellectual accomplishment that you have attained. I welcome you to the ancient and honorable company of scholars. Congratulations on your special accomplishments. The candidates for the degrees will now proceed to the platform to cross as their names are called by Dr. Carolyn Capinas and be invested with symbols of their degrees. Dr. Deborah Mix, Axine Associate Dean of the Graduate School, will lead the candidates to the platform. Carter John Rice. Assisting with the hooding today will be Amelia Kaplan, Associate Professor of Music Composition from the School of Music, and Michael Pounds, Professor of Music Theory and Composition from the School of Music.
Douglas Oliver Bird. Assisting with the hooding today will be Marilyn Marks Quick, Assistant Professor of Educational Leadership. Charles Edward Reynolds. Assisting with the hooding today will be Marilyn Marks Quick. Shelley G. Gies. Assisting with the hooding today will be Marilyn Marks Quick. Dia Moore Young. Assisting with the hooding today will be Marilyn Marks Quick. Alisa Renee Schnick. Assisting with the hooding today will be Marilyn Marks Quick. Christina Louise Blanche. Assisting with the hooding today will be Thalia Mulvihill, Acting Assistant Provost and Professor of Educational Studies. Renee Ellen Bomar. Assisting with the hooding today will be Thalia Mulvihill. J. Scott Bowling. Assisting with the hooding today will be Lori Boylan, Chairperson, Department of Educational Leadership. Bettina Marie Rose. Assisting with the hooding today will be Lori Boylan. Tim Fars. Assisting with the hooding today will be Lori Boylan. Rebecca Dawn Brown. Assisting with the hooding today will be John Ellis, Assistant Professor of Educational Leadership. Michael L. McCoy. Assisting with the hooding today will be John Ellis. Sarah Kathleen Weimer. Assisting with the hooding today will be John Ellis. <laughs> Patricia Ann Hartman. Assisting with the hooding today will be Michael Harvey, Professor of Special Education. <laughs> Megan Marie Blankenberger. Assisting with the hooding today will be Blair Matterin, audiologist, Department of Speech Pathology and Audiology. Erin Elizabeth Good. Assisting with the hooding today will be Blair Matterin. Benjamin Lee Hendricks. Assisting with the hooding today will be Blair Matterin. Samuel Arnold Schultz. Assisting with the hooding today will be Blair Matterin. Sarah Elizabeth Bangenbaum. Assisting with the hooding today will be Laura Stevenson, instructor of audiology. Kayla Jean Peace. Assisting with the hooding today will be Laura Stevenson. Mitch Wangsgard. Assisting with the hooding today will be Claudia Updike, Professor of Speech Pathology and Audiology. Shelley Elaine Ingle, 
Assisting with the hooding today will be Linda Martin, Professor of Elementary Education. Aid Mutlag A. Alaninzi. Assisting with the hooding today will be Elizabeth Riddle, Professor of English. Carrie Ann King. Assisting with the hooding today will be Michael Donnelly, Associate Professor of English. <laughs> Carrie Duke. Assisting with the hooding today will be Robert Habick, Professor of English. <laughs> Gregory James Gorsicki. Assisting with the hooding today will be Scott Trappy, the John and Janice Fisher Professor of Exercise Science and Director of the Human Performance Laboratory. <laughs> Jose Ivan Martinez. Assisting with the hooding today will be Karen Ford, Associate Professor of Educational Studies. John Joseph McCreary. Assisting with the hooding today will be Gregory Mertant, Professor of Educational Psychology. <laughs> Melissa Sign. Assisting with the hooding today will be Holmes Finch, George and Francis Ball, Distinguished Professor of Educational Psychology. Sharon Maxwell Simo. Assisting with the hooding today will be Belle Kelsey, Assistant Professor of Nursing and uh, Director of Nursing Practice, Program Director. We will now present the candidates for master's degrees. Will all master's degree candidates please stand? <laughs> Interim President King, I present to you those candidates for master's degrees who have completed all the requirements for their respective degrees. Upon the recommendation of the faculty that you completed all the requirements for graduation, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ball State University, I confer upon you your respective master's degrees with all the rights, honors, privileges, and obligations therein to pertaining. The diploma of the university shall forever be the testimony recognizing your completion of the first level of graduate study. Congratulations to each of you. You may be seated. Dr. John Emmert, Acting Dean of the Honors College, will announce the honors recognitions. The Honors College provides distinctive educational opportunities for undergraduates of high academic achievement. In addition to their major and minor concentrations, students in the Honors College must complete the Honors Core Curriculum, consisting of six core courses in the Liberal Arts and Sciences and two additional Honors Colloquia that focus on critical analysis of issues in areas of faculty expertise. Each student must also complete a senior capstone thesis or creative project and maintain a cumulative grade point average of 3.33 or higher in all coursework. Those baccalaureate candidates who are graduating from the University Honors College are wearing the red and white honors courts. Will you please stand and be recognized?
Thank you. You may be seated. Departmental honors are awarded to those students who graduate with a minimum grade point average of 3.5 in their major. They must also complete special work in their major, as well as some form of thesis or creative project. Will you please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Academic honors in writing are based upon review of a portfolio of course-related writing that demonstrates sustained excellence in writing throughout the student's undergraduate years. In addition, a committee reviews an essay written on a common topic of general interest. Will you please stand and be recognized? You may be seated. We recognize associate degree students who have achieved a 3.6 or higher grade point average with the designation associate degree with academic distinction. Will the students graduating with this recognition please stand and be recognized? Students with outstanding scholastic records graduate with academic honors. These students are wearing bronze, silver, or gold medallions on red ribbons. Students who have achieved scholastic averages between 3.60 and 3.79 are wearing the bronze medallion and graduating cum laude. Will you please stand and be recognized? You may be seated. Those graduates who have earned scholastic averages between 3.80 and 3.89 are wearing the silver medallion and graduating magna cum laude. Will you please rise and be recognized? You may be seated. The highest scholastic honors given by the university go to those students whose scholastic averages are 3.90 or higher. These graduates are wearing the gold medallion and are graduating summa cum laude. Will you please rise and be recognized? You may be seated. Congratulations to all of you who are graduating cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude for your superior academic achievements. We have nine graduating seniors who have achieved special academic distinction who are present today. I ask Trustee Conley to come forward and the junior marshals to escort the following students to the platform. Tanner Francis Barton, Shea Brianne Baugh, Julie Elizabeth Brisland, Emily M. Brizzy, Megan Elizabeth Frederick, Kayla Jean Geyser, Haley Christine Maccabee, Kayla J. Miller, and Daniel Curtis Smith. This is quite an amazing group here. As Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, it gives me great pleasure to recognize these nine students who achieved special academic distinction. They have completed their baccalaureate degree programs with a perfect 4.0 grade point average. <laughs> it's an incredible achievement.
So as I call your name and I have something to read about all of you, please come forward and receive your citation, recognizing your achievement. Tanner Francis Barton hails from Dublin, Ohio, and is an honors college graduate with a double major in health science and Spanish, and two minors in history and interpersonal relations. Tanner helped to create the College Diabetes Network here at Ball State, an official organization recognized by the Office of Student Life. He plans to pursue a master's degree in kinesiology sports performance program at Ball State while serving as a graduate assistant for the men's swimming diving uh, program. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, Shea Brian Baugh from Newcastle, Indiana, majored in pre-medical preparation in biology with a minor in chemistry. She plans to attend Ball State University in the fall for graduate school to earn a master's in physiology. She also has an acceptance a position to work as a graduate assistant for this department and will be applying to medical school this fall. Congratulations. Julie Elizabeth Bilslin is from Carmel, Indiana, and majored in accounting with a business information technology minor. In addition to completing her degree in three years, Julie has been actively involved in Beta Alpha Psi, a national scholastic and professional fraternity for financial information professionals, and Beta Gamma Sigma Business Honor Society. After graduation, she will have a summer audit internship with Kat Sapper and Miller, and she'll be returning to Ball State in the fall to pursue a master's degree in accounting. Congratulations. From Indianapolis, Indiana, Emily Brizzy is majored in accounting and is a member of Chi Omega Sorority and Beta Gamma Sigma Business Honor Society. Emily plans to move to Los Angeles, California after graduation and is attending University of Southern California for her master's degree in accounting. Congratulations. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Frederick is from Clayton, Indiana. She majored in biology with a concentration in cellular and molecular biology and a chemistry minor as she completed her degree in three years. After graduation, she'll be starting a one-year internship at Eli Lilly in Indianapolis. Congratulations. Kayla Jean Geisner has a double major in international business in German with a minor in logistics and supply chain management. Throughout her time at Ball State, she has been actively involved with the German club, American Sign Language Club, Delta Phi Alpha, and Beta Gamma Sigma. Additionally, she worked for the Office of Retention and Graduation as a transfer student ambassador and sophomore peer coach for the last two years, not including a semester she spent abroad in Rindenburg, Germany. Originally from Michigan City, Indiana, she'll be moving to Brownsburg, Indiana after graduation, where she accepted a position in distribution with TJX Companies. Congratulations. <laughs> Haley Christian Maccabee is from Van Wert, Ohio. She majored in criminal justice and criminology while being involved in the Social Justice Intergroup Dialogue, National Society of Collegiate Scholars, and Indiana Army National Guard. She's been living in Washington, D.C. since January, interning at a firm focusing on military criminal defense, and she plans to transition to active duty to serve as a paralegal for the Army. Thank you so much for your service. <laughs> From Goshen, Indiana, Kayla J. Miller is a pre-med chemistry major with a concentration in biochemistry. She has participated in undergraduate biochemistry research, college mentors for kids, dance marathon, and a member of Alpha Chi Omega sorority. She was a member for the Cardinal Leadership and Service Seminar and a peer mentor for the Honor College. 
She also served as a student representative at the University Review Board and on the Student Academic Ethics Committee as a representative for the College of Science and Humanities. Following graduation, she will attend IU School of Medi Medicine in the fall. Congratulations. Daniel Curtis Smith is from Muncie, Indiana. He majored in chemistry with a concentration in biochemistry and pre-medical preparation. As a student, he conducted biomedical research under Dr. Bart Peterson of Indiana School of Medicine in Muncie, was an officer and member of the Ball State Student Affiliate of the American Chemical Society, and a summer research fellow at Yale School of Medicine. After graduation, he plans to attend an uh, MD-PhD program at Indiana University School of Medicine with a long-term goal of pursuing a career as a physician scientist. Congratulations. An amazing group of talented leaders. Thank you all. Congratulations. Thank you, Trustee Conley. I now invite Interim President King back to the podium to present three prestigious senior awards. Thank you, Dr. Buck. It is my pleasure to recognize three outstanding students here this morning who have been selected from a competitive pool of their peers for the distinction they earned. I would like to invite Dr. Kay Bales, Vice President for Student Affairs and Enrollment Services and Dean of Students to assist me with the presentation of these awards. We will begin with the Seniors Distinguished Service Award for Outstanding Community Service. I'm pleased to present this year's award to Ms. Mackenzie Taylor Espick. Today, Mackenzie is graduating with a Bachelor of Social Work with minors in Psychology of Human Development and Interpersonal Relations. She puts the community's needs ahead of her own and plans to work for the Department of Child Services. During her time at Ball State, Mackenzie has been involved with student voluntary services, holding the offices of Secretary, Vice President, and President. She has logged more than 300 volunteer service hours and made an impact on hundreds of people of all ages. In addition to the beautification projects and boxing food at Second Harvest, Mackenzie has volunteered at organizations that benefit the youth. She will serve in her career. She has tutored children and assisted with child care at Albany and Royerton Elementary Schools, the YWCA, and A Better Way. She helped create an, and implement the Cardinal 360, an after-school program for the Boys and Girls Club of Muncie. Local youth enjoyed the Dr. Seuss Literacy and Fine Arts Fair she organized. She says Angel Tree, a project provided, providing holiday gifts to over 300 children in need, gave her a chance to reflect on her future and helped her grow as a leader. Mackenzie, we recognize you for your commitment and inspirational leadership. On behalf of Ball State University, thank you for your service and congratulations. It is now my pleasure to present the Provost Prize for Outstanding Scholarly Work to Mr. Tanner Francis Barton. Tanner is a true scholar athlete, excelling in the pool and the classroom. He served as co-captain for the men's swimming and diving team for two years and was a member of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee's Executive Board. He is a three-time Mid-America Conference Championship qualifier and a top six finisher for the team. MAC officials selected him to represent the male student athletes at the NCAA 2016 Leadership Summit. An honors college student, Tanner is graduating summa cum laude with a Bachelor of Arts in Health Science and Spanish with minors in interpersonal relations and history. As you learned earlier, his GPA is a perfect 4.0. He worked with Dr. Jagdish Kubchandani to research the relationship between diabetes and depression in American adults. Tanner has a personal interest in diabetes. 
Having lived with the condition since age eight, he has volunteered with the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation and is a JDRF international spokesperson. Novo Nordisk, the world's largest producer of synthesized insulin, was impressed, so impressed with Tanner, the company asked him to present at the headquarters in Denmark, and he's agreed to continue serving as a consultant. His goal is to have pharmaceutical companies put patients at the center of decision making. He plans to become a certified diabetes educator and draw on his experiences to help children manage the disease and persevere through adversity. Tanner, on behalf of Ball State University, thank you for your example and congratulations. Thank you again. Finally, I'm delighted to present the John R. Emmons Outstanding Senior Award. Named in honor of a former Ball State University president, this award recognizes a senior's cumulative co-curricular achievement, leadership, and contributions to Ball State University. The 2017 recipient is Ms. Samantha R. Ralston. As a resident assistant at Kinghorn and Woodworth Residence Halls, Sam has been a true role model. With her leadership, selflessness, and integrity, students received the best service and the most compassionate responses. She took her dedication to another level by serving on the National Residence Hall Honorary where she was president. Sam shares Ball State's commitment to diversity. In addition to a term on the University's Council on Diversity and Inclusion, she spent three years on the team that converted a retired Muncie City vehicle into the Freedom Bus, a mobile museum about the civil rights history in central, East Central Indiana. There, Sam curated exhibits, researched the past, and designed and produced three oral histories. An honors college student, Sam is graduating cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Communication Studies with a Spanish minor. She will pursue a master's degree in student affairs and higher education at Colorado State University and will have an assistantship as an assistant residence director in housing and dining services. She wants to work in higher educa education with students in housing and residence life or higher education administration. Sam, on behalf of Ball State University, thank you for your dedication and congratulations. Thank you, Interim President King. I now invite Colonel Kelly Rosenberger to the podium for the commissioning of 10 ROTC graduates. This is Colonel Rosenberger's final commencement. His next assignment is in Saudi Arabia in the U.S. training mission. Thank you, Acting Provost Buck. Wood Cadets Caitlin Ashley Campbell, Chase Eric Cota, Jeremy Lee Jarvis, Molly Ruth Martin, Trevor Phillips, Michael Vincent Quinn, Benjamin Rodinas, Janelle, Renee, Janelle Marie Rosenbarger, Liam Letterman Shelton, and Mariah Allison Vance. Please pr proceed to the stage to take the commissioning oath. Once completed, they will be commissioned as United States Army officers. Repeat after me. Aye. Aye. Caitlin Campbell. Chase Cota. Jeremy Jarvis. Molly Martin. Trevor Phillips. Michael Quinn. Benjamin Rodinas. Janelle Rosenbarger. Liam Shelton. Brian Vance. Having been appointed. Having been, been appointed an officer, an officer, an officer in the Army of the United States, in the Army of the United States, in the grade of second lieutenant, in the grade of second lieutenant, do you solemnly swear, you solemnly swear that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of this office. The duties of this office. 
which I'm about to enter. Which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So, so help, help me God. God. Congratulations. Will all candidates for baccalaureate degrees in the College of Applied Sciences and Technology please rise? Will all candidates for baccalaureate degrees in the College of Architecture and Planning please rise? Will all candidates for baccalaureate degrees in the Miller College of Business please rise? Will all candidates for baccalaureate degrees in the College of Communication, Information, and Media please rise? Will all candidates for baccalaureate degrees in the College of Fine Arts please rise? Will all candidates for baccalaureate degrees in the College of Health please rise? Will all candidates for baccalaureate degrees or associate degrees in the College of Sciences and Humanities please rise? Will all candidates for baccalaureate degrees in Teachers College please rise? Interim President King, I am pleased to present to you those candidates who have completed all of the requirements for the respective baccalaureate or associate degrees. Upon the recommendation of the faculty that you completed all the requirements for graduation, and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Ball State University, I confer upon you your respective bachelor's or associate degrees with all the rights, honors, privileges, and obligations thereunto pertaining. The diploma of the university shall forever be the testimony of your accomplishment. Which, with pleasure, I admit you into the company of educated men and women. Congratulations to each of you, you may now wear your mortarboard tassel on the left side. You may be seated. I invite Board of Trustees Chair Rick Hall to now come to the podium. Thank you, Dr. Buck. We now have one last very, very special member of the class of 2017 to recognize. President King, would you step forward? Sixteen months ago, Dr. King postponed his retirement to step forward and take a leadership role in this time of transition at the university. And when he did so, he had two goals. The first was to go out and recruit an outstanding next president. And as you know, our next president will be starting on, on May 15th, Jeff Mearns. And this is Terry's last official uh, action as, as president. And nobody's more excited than Terry to have Jeff coming. <laughs> In fact, one of his faculty members, one of our faculty members, provided him with a countdown clock, which I think is now probably under 200 hours, Terry. Right. <laughs> Not that you're counting. And the second, uh, second goal we had uh, as the leadership of the university was to make the university stronger during this interim period and it could not have been completed in more spectacular fashion. 
Last year we had a record number of applications, which resulted in a significant increase in enrollment. This year we're on pace to match both those applications and enrollment in the fall. Then most importantly to all of you in the audience, we have increased our four-year graduation rate more than any other state university, and our job placement rate is 93% the highest it's ever been. In recognition of our performance, this past year the legislature increased our appropriations and they also awarded to Ball State $87 million for the renovation of the Cooper Science Labs. This, and the students know how much that means. This is the largest project the state has ever funded on this campus. As a result of that financial strength, the Board of Trustees was pleased to announce yesterday that our tuition increase next year will be the lowest in 41 years. I know you're wishing you were here, that was last year, but you did have you did have the lowest increase last time in 39 years. <laughs> These successes have been the product of the efforts of many throughout the Ball State community, not least of which, most important of which, has been our faculty who has dedicated themselves to our students' success and we're so appreciative. But also our administration, our board of trustees, our foundation, our alumni association, and as a result of those efforts, as Ball State enters its next chapter, it does so from a position of strength. So we look forward to all our new graduates coming back and continuing this improvement of our great university. So Dr. King, on behalf of the entire Ball State community, thank you so much for your contribution to this effort, and we wish you the very best in your retirement. Thank you, Rick. Um, I have to pull the microphone down a little bit. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's certainly been a team effort, and I'm extraordinarily proud of this university and, and worked with these faculty and, and staff for the last 11 years. It's been an honor for me to uh, participate in all that. As we bring our commencement ceremony to a close, I'd like to share a word of encouragement with our newest alumni. In this knowledge-based economy, a college education is critical. In fact, Ball State University's mission statement concludes with, we transform information into knowledge, knowledge into judgment, and judgment into action that addresses complex problems. In the class of 2017, I see that potential. I see the next generation of state leaders, artists, musicians, life-saving medical professionals, truth-seeking journalists, teachers who will shape our future, architects who will build it, and teachers whose research will change, and scientists whose research will change the world. That is the value of the education you've received at Ball State University. It has prepared for you for a lifetime of leadership and innovation. You are the ultimate measurement of success of this university and the evidence that we deliver on our promise. Today we honor your academic achievements and show our pride in your accomplishments. Our ceremonies symbolize your new status in the world by granting of your degrees. But I wish to honor two other significant groups here today. 
Members of the graduating class, I present to you for recognition the faculty who today will wear academic regalia in a centuries-old tradition as a symbol of their commitment to teaching and the search for truth. Poet Mark Van Doren said, the art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery. Society has charged educators to create, preserve, and transmit the accumulated wisdom of humanity to each new generation, and your graduation reflects their excellence. Will the faculty please stand? Please join me in indicating our gratitude. Thank you. There is another special group of people to thank. Members of the graduating class, these individuals have provided you with counsel, friendship, support, and encouragement during your years of study here. Your graduation reflects their love and pride in you. Will the parents, spouses, relatives, friends, and sponsors of the graduates please stand and be recognized? Thank you, thank you. We're certainly pleased to have you here to share the joy of this occasion. On behalf of the Ball State University Alumni Association, I welcome you into our alumni ranks, which now number nearly 191,000. We hope to see you return for a visit, a class reunion, homecoming, an athletic contest, an artistic performance, to continue your education, or even to bring your own child here to learn, just as you did. Commencement is an end and a new beginning. And as you heard, today is a commencement for me as well. It's bittersweet. So this is the last time I'll be able to lead a commencement as a provost or president. And I will miss the faculty and staff I work with and the students, families, alumni, and friends I've gotten to know. Thank you for all your hard work and your contribution to Ball State University's success. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve as your provost and your interim president. Members of the graduating class, I offer my you my congratulations on your outstanding accomplishments and my best wishes for your future endeavors. Remember that you will always be a member of the Cardinal Nation. Enjoy the rest of this special day with your family and friends, and I bid you a fond and heartfelt farewell. I hope you enjoy the time you will spend today with your friends, fellow graduates, and families. And again, congratulations on reaching this special day in your lives. I invite you to attend the college ceremonies beginning at 12.30 p.m. The locations are listed in the program. The late afternoon ceremonies will begin at 3.30 p.m. Miller College of Business will hold its ceremony in Emmons Auditorium. The College of Sciences Humanities ceremony will be in Worthen Arena the College of Applied Sciences and Technology in the Joanne Gora Student Recreation and Wellness Center, and the Teachers College Ceremony in the Field Sports Building. Graduates, we ask that you remain in your seats until you are dismissed by an usher. We will dis be dismissing by college. Graduates and guests of the College of Health should remain seated until all other graduates have left the arena. We ask that all other guests proceed directly to the site of your, college, your graduate's college ceremony. For your convenience, shuttle buses to Emmons Auditorium for the College of Fine Arts ceremony are available outside gates one and two. Guests of the College of Architecture and Planning and of the College of Communication, Information, and Media should proceed to gate three and follow the signs to your location. Graduates of the College of Health should proceed to upper level gate one for their lineup when they are dismissed by an usher. Now, please rise and join Rachel Weinfeld for the singing of the alma mater. The words can be found on page two of the program. Please remain standing until the colors have passed and then be seated until the platform party has recessed.
Watch on. March. Toe guard. Hold. Right. Face. Retire the colors. Forward, march, left, left. Well, there you have it for the 179th Annual Graduation Commencement Ceremony and the 99th Graduating Class at Ball State. Those included the remarks from the commencement address speaker, Teresa Lubberts, the awarding of the diplomas, and the final actions of interim President King. Mick, pretty exciting days for these graduates and their families as they embark on new journeys. A heartfelt congratulations to each one of the graduates here today going and celebrating their accomplishments here throughout their time at Ball State. We thank all of you for joining us here today. That's all from Worthen Arena. This has been the 2017 graduation commencement ceremony as we say one of many congratulations to the graduating class of 2017.